So the extension tube came down um, and here on this housing and you can see this is just all totally corroded. Oh, there's a new anchor windlass. So we've just got another big parcel here and I guess we should explain where it came from. What it actually is, before I go into that, oh, there's a new anchor windlass. <laughs> what a beauty. It's, uh, it's come delivered to Townsville um, in a very timely fashion, I must admit. So what's going on? Now, when you're sort of hanging around your own hometown and you know, you're as part of your local community, I guess you sort of find a favourite chandlery, you know, and you, and you go and use that. But you sort of lose that luxury, among other things, when you go cruising around. So we've been, we've been looking for somewhere where we can get our, our boat supplies. I mean, we can patronise the local chandleries for a few things, but I like to deal with, you know, one person over a given amount of time, get a bit of a relationship going if you want. So we have found one, Arnold's Boat Shop, all right, down in New South Wales. Um, now we do most of our dealings with him over the phone and online, obviously, and this is a case in point, this Muir winch. So I was talking to Arnold about getting hold of a winch and he recommended that Muir is an Australian brand. So that, that sold it to me for a start, but he also said the support was very good. Um, and that's why I like dealing with a particular shop, like once you get to know them, uh, they can make that sort of recommendation. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy that we've got this. Now, Arnold has done some special deals for us, obviously, because you know we have an audience. Um, and we asked him if he could help out um, our viewers, all right? And he has, he's agreed that anyone that orders um, anything from Arnold's, and he's got a pretty big stock going on, uh, gets free delivery anywhere in Australia. If you're in the States or somewhere else, then I'm sure he'll send it to you for a price, but it won't be free delivery. But anyway, this is what we've got. We've got this new winch. Previously, Arnold sent us up also a new throttle um, controller, and I'm in the process of putting that in. It's, it's not that exciting, but we will be installing this and we'll be showing it. And I'm really excited <laughs> to get it, to get it going on. Um, Pascal was enjoying working on pulling up the chain and everything else like that when I couldn't be bothered, but I think this is going to make our life a little bit easier. So Pasky, if people want to get hold of um, free delivery, if they want to deal with Arnold, what are they just going to find the find the website on the in the description? The website for Arnold's is in the description. We'll put the website right below your head right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the code for free delivery All right. in so, Australia. So what's the scope? If you ring up, see the part that you want. Um, and the other nice thing was when you get the quote from um, that particular boat shop, they'll give you the part numbers and stuff like that uh, for the products that you're after. It makes it quite easy to make a comparison and also makes it quite easy to confirm that you're getting the right bit. Um, but yeah, if you go and check out Arnold's Boat Shop, if you because some of our people that are watching us are getting their boat ready. Mm. So a chandlery that's going to do you a decent deal and deliver to your door um, for free, it's probably not a bad deal. Our old anchor winch, um, which failed, the motor, the shaft and the gearbox was all fine. But the extension tube came down um, and here on this housing, and you can see this is just all totally corroded, this metal here. And that is what gave way. All right, so when this, uh, when this motor would actuate, instead of spinning the shaft, <laughs> it would just spin the gearbox around the shaft. Um, look, this, this, this winch is just years and years and years old. And to be honest, the, the gypsy or the wildcat, whatever you want to call it, the bit where the chain engages, it was really chewed out. 
they're not making these anymore. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to, to having a new winch, but what we'll have to do now is I'll go and get all the top side bits off and pull them out um, and the new winch will have a different footprint and we'll just have to see how things like holes and stuff line up um, the old bolt holes I'll probably have to fill those and get rid of them but if we can if we can utilize any holes at all we will so quite some time ago I pulled this electric motor off the gearbox um, and I changed the oil in the gearbox and I wrapped it with this Denso tape here, all right. So it's it's tape impregnated with a bit of grease. And see what sort of a, a job the this Denso tape has done. So we've still got um, the paint under there. The paint's, you know, like it's still complete. It's still pretty whole. The grease has actually reacted with the paint. Um, so this is kill rust paint that's been put on there and it hasn't really enjoyed being under a petrochemical paint <laughs> so, but this this winch the body is just fine like it looks really good so this denso tape um, has done really well in an ideal situation the electric motor that driving your winch should be in a separate compartment or isolated from flaying chain um, and also seawater this this wasn't there's just no way to really do it I could have made a, a separate little um, cover for it, but you know, like how many things can you possibly do? If you want to go out sailing, then it's you know it's a totally different thing as if you want to set aside a total year to totally rebuild your boat from the ground up. So this Denso tape has actually preserved that motor in amazingly good condition since I last had a look at it. Forming a flat base for our new winch was a bit of a test of Troy's inventiveness. Alright, so this is um, this is sort of an awkward job that if you were trying to measure this with a ruler, it might be a little bit tricky. But luckily, there are some really great feeler gauges that you can use um, for seeing what this is. Drill bits. Alright, when they say that this is 2.5 millimetres, I know that it is. Okay, so two mil on that side, just, just fits under bit more there. No, pretty close. So we can say that that's nominally two millimetres. And on this side... It's two, a little bit farther over from the middle, isn't it? It's a little bit farther over from the middle, so that's not too bad. So what we'll do... We'll take it down 2.5 millimetres. It's mm -hmm. very, very close. Tenth of an inch. Alright, so we want to just take that off. Because we're here in a marina, what we're going to have to do now is just um, surround this by a bit of a catch cloth um, and our little rails that we're going to put here we're actually going to have to just drill a hole and I'll screw those into the deck actually rather than screws why don't we just use the why I thought don't we, you were going to hot glue it yeah why don't we just hot glue it yeah I'm sort of still still coming around to hot glue <laughs> all it has to do is resist the friction of this mounting oh and that's worth talking about right so all I needed was something was fairly dimensionally stable, pretty straight, um, just as a bit of a, a sled, and you'll see how this works out. So all I've done is um, drilled a couple of holes. Like obviously I've been using this, so this is a total improvisation. Um, but yeah, this router had another little plate to it, and so it was a really great template just to, to mark where the screws holes had to be drilled and then I was just able to just countersink those a bit and just attach it straight to my router. Look at that. And now, once this is out of the way, I'll have a nice datum point to set my bit yeah, down, two and a half millimeters beyond that. So whatever that is, then I'll, I'll measure that, just put another two and a half mil, tighten everything up. And then look, we'll have this really nice sled to, to route. And because it's taking its reference off these two rails, not this curved deck, what we'll have is a nice flat piece there. And that means that that nice flat pad will bed down into it. The 
because the deck is just well basically all over the place we want to we want to glue it as close to where this bit of wood's going to be and take that as our reference point if i glued it back here because the deck's sort of like this <laughs> it'd um it wouldn't make a very good reference so we'll do this then i can i can hold our bit of wood against there and again just having a look at how it is relative then we'll we'll do the same one it has to be roughly the same distance off that center for it to be close if we had it right up um, against it because of the different height in the deck see we can see like there's a, quite a step there but not much of a step there and we'd have a beautifully flat surface that was slightly down to port so again we can just use those drill bits as a very very quick and uh, quick and dirty feeler gauge if you like we'll get this all nice and level first and then I'm going to taper these holes and repair everything and stuff like that. We're going to leave this hole and we're going to use it in the in the next next round because it's already been rounded on the bottom there. Mm -hmm. um, That's why it's a little bit off centre, the um, the square, right? Yeah. Oh, to use it? Yeah. Yeah, but also if you look at the drawing, mm. the winch is on the centre line of the boat. But yep. because the anchor chain comes in here mm -hmm. and then it goes around and then goes down the spool, that's mm -hmm. why it's off center. Okay. And the reason I want to use this old hole is because we have this nifty device that I made up before. All right. When we're, um, normally when we're going from place to place and the weather's not too wild, we don't bother with this, but when we're going out on a, a long passage, and particularly in deep water where we're not going to be using the anchor, we might lash the anchor to the front or stow it, so there's nothing up the front here. The chain I'll hook onto there, drop into that hole, and then when I tighten this thing, it squeezes those two washers together and makes that hole watertight. Because this anchor locker, to get the, to get the right depth you know, of 300 mil plus, 300 mil, 300 mil plus, like a foot. Um, it's had to go internal, it can't be self-draining, so it needs to be pumped out. So having a hole up the front of your boat, um, particularly when you're plunging through a lot of water, means that that anchor locker needs to be pumped out every hour or two hours, which is a real pain. Mm. So um, if, we can, if we can put that little butt plug in there, then that's great. All right, so We'll just set our bit right at that height right now. So zero cut there. Tighten everything up. We have to put the sheets up. Yeah, so that's all. That now is all ready to go. So the main thing we need to do now is to just contain all the dust and everything. have to clean that edge up a little bit. Once we've taken the main body of this out, there's a little high spot there that I just skimmed over. So we're halfway. Here's our, here's the finished product. We can see that it's 
barely taken any meat out here and all along here there's hardly anything I will there's the line that we want to reach so I'm going to have to just take this paint off just with sandpaper just a nice low key little thing just to get it back to the glass and it hardly took anything away from there and I'll just neaten up that line a bit but in here we've taken I don't know about a, a mil and a half but up here there's our mm. two and a half mil our tenth of an inch was taken out there in here we can see the, the wood that was made for this stiffener. We can see this in here and there's still, <laughs> there's still like a tenth of an inch of glass left even though we've taken that and that's just, that's just on the top here. So when they laid these old clansmen's up, they laid them up, they laid them up pretty solid. So this, um, this pine, it's quite easy to work. It will be glassed in place. So where the paint is all around here, all of that now needs to, I'll just run some tape around here and we'll take, the, we'll take the paint away back to um, bare glass. Everything's laid up. The next step is, I just want to round over these shoulders with a round over bit on the router. Um, this doesn't have enough meat, so I'm just gonna clamp it to a board so the bearing has got something to follow here, and it'll round over this. We've glassed in um, this bit of pine, all right, and it's it's can't really great, and I've just sanded around the outside just to get rid of the, the bits of glass. And I've cut a hole where the old chain hole was, and I, I'm hoping to reuse that. If we look at our drawing here for where I need to put the holes, you see that the chain hole for this particular winch is really, really big, and it's an irregular shape. What I want to do, and I'm not sure if it's going to work yet, all right, I'm sort of making this up as I go along, is where's that little stopper i want to continue to use that so i want to keep that same size hole which is smaller than that other one but right now i'm going to well i'm going to just route out that hole so it exactly replicates the one underneath okay i just got a, a hole saw that was the nearest size and put that hole in um, so i'm going to copy that and then i'm going to get a round over bit and just chamfer the edge this isn't a plunger router because it's a, a little cheap laminate trimmer. Uh, you have to set the depth. So I've set the depth, I'll leave it in that hole. All right, so we've got the chain coming around the gypsy. It's pointing right there at the bow, so that's fine. That's pretty good. And this side of the winch, actually if we move it, just over that side a little bit. It comes right to the edge of our timber there. And this line there comes to pretty much the center of our hole. So that chain will come down, fall down through there. I'll have the holes. And if I fold this on, we'll see that there's going to be, there's going to be from here to here. There'll be a little bit of an overlap on our winch. So later on what I might have to do is just throw a little bit of um, extra glass around here and just fair that. It's a nice shiny winch. Um, so now's the moment of truth. Does everything line up? Let's have a look. <laughs> I'll be buggered. 
Straight in. But what we're going to have is this old <laughs> busted ass paint, and then we're going to have this nice bright white, white bit here. At yeah. least, at least until we paint the deck. Paint the deck. That's like the next massive job. It is a big job. Mm. It is quite a big job. But I feel like after doing all these jobs in Townsville, like I don't feel as scared of it anymore. I was kind of overwhelmed by the thought of painting the deck, but now I'm. No, well, it's just. It won't um, be that big a deal. No, it's not a big deal at all. So it makes a lot of sense to do your painting before, like if you can, is to before you fit the hardware. So the anchor winch will go down on top of this and the paint will be continuous. If you mast off the winch and paint it around it, you've got a break in the paint there and that's a site of failure usually. Whereas if you've got this one um, solid you know, sheet that's under the actual installation, the paint usually has a better chance of um, you know, wearing well and wearing long. So this, uh, this board here is going to be going on the underside of the deck. So I've glassed this as well. This is another bit of pine, exactly like what we've put on the top. Um, but this is going to go through the bottom. So what we're going to essentially have is the winch, 18 millimetres of timber, glassed, <laughs> alright, or double glassed. Then through, well it's not quite an inch anymore because um, you know we shaved off a few mil but it's close enough so then an inch of that stiffener but it has it has had old holes from the other um, old winch taken out and then another one of these underneath sandwiching it and spreading the load over the whole lot and three bolts will come down like that so that should all work pretty well and remember that when we when we routed out into the deck and made it level you know there was like a two and a half mil lip in front so that block at the front it, the forces are going to be pulling forward, it's going to be hitting that lip and so most of the forces pulling forward are going to actually hit there and uh, well apart from the bolts going down there's, a, there's another thing that's resisting it going forward so this will just spread the load because as it goes like that it's going to want to lift so this double glass bit of pine as well and then we'll drill the holes through there using, um, using the template so then when we drop that down We'll put it up on the other side and we'll have a nice bit of load spreading going on. Paint over this pad has, has dried sufficiently now overnight. So it might be time just to put the winch on with a little bit of marine seal. I'm just using Sikaflex 291. The winch comes supplied with this nylon plate, nice flat surface. Underneath here you can see the moulding. There's no point putting any marine seal on there, but definitely on this surface here we want to all right, and what it basically is, is we'll just have like a, a, this is a polyurethane, and it's almost like a rubber once it's cured. So we'll put a bead of this around any hole that's going to go down into the deck here. And I'm just going to put the weight of the windlass on it and let it spread it out. But I won't tighten it immediately. A lot of the time when people put deck fittings in, they'll use some sealant like this one. This is the Sikaflex 291, or they might use Sikaflex 55200. They'll put the whatever they're installing on their deck in the hole and then they'll immediately tighten it down and what it does is it squeezes all the material out from under the under the fitting they've just put there. So they'll lose it quite a bit of it. But if you squeeze it where you want it, and I'm just going to put it around each one of these holes and then drop the fitting on it and just sort of bed it down and then leave it, once it's cured then if you tighten it down it actually, like you're compressing a rubber gasket, it gives you a much better finish. This stuff is messy, <laughs> so you definitely want to be wearing gloves with it, but methylated spirits, okay, alcohol, does clean it up afterwards if we get some on the winch, which I probably will.
So that bit there that's squeezed out of the edge. What we might do is, there's two ways you can deal with it. You can remove it straight off the, you know, as soon as it's happened, which can be a little bit messy. Um, or you can leave it and you can actually take it off with a razor blade later on. But I'm going to just temp trouble and just remove it now. Oh. Yeah, that's all right. Don't panic. Don't panic. That's the latest spirits time. Definitely, alcohol time. Definitely alcohol time. And screwing everything up. Just turning it to get a clean bit each time. All right, so if you've ever wanted to lay in bed and install some heavy winching equipment, maybe sailing is for you. So, obviously this is the folks are where we sleep and when we flip this down, we access the anchor locker. So, we'll get a, a bit of a look through here. What I've done is we've glassed in the plate above and then we've sunk our bolts. We've, we've put all the top part of the, um, the windlass in. So the bolts have protruded through and then I glassed up another bit of 18mm pine and fed that up onto it. And then I actually used some recycled bits of Thermalite to make big washer spreaders and they were glassed as well with double bias glass so they're strong as all hell. And I've put all nuts on. So now we've got, um, we've got the drive shaft hanging down and all that remains really is to offer up the motor and the gearbox to the shaft and that'll be, oh, and also just hook up the wiring, but the wiring's already in place. It's, it's neither here nor there. But the, the best thing about these muirs, apart from being made in Australia, all right, is that they have this quick fit feature. So basically they've got these grooves in here and they match to some corresponding splines. And then the tricky part is that they've actually got this little groove through here that intersects with one of the splines and you just get this spring clip and slide it home like that and it actually engages on and holds it on the splines and then somewhere around here there's a 17 mil head bolt okay 12 mil bolt and that goes up through the middle of the shaft and that's it that's all there is to installing this now really really simple system and that means when I when it comes time to service this I don't have to muck around in there with bolts all I'm going to have to do is undo this and then pull the spring the spring clip and this will just come off and I'll be able to pull it out give it a polish up you know a bit more lube the gearbox itself I'm really I really like it it's just sealed for life it doesn't need to be topped up with oil or anything like that um, the lubricant is in there for life, like a lot of heavy machinery. So we can basically see through there that all it is, is um, you know, it's just going to take the shaft through there and accept a keyway. The next step, I guess, is to offer this thing up, um, you know, get the, get the keyway, get the key down in the keyway. Then I'll be able to just spin it and orientate this thing where I want it. I just want the motor coming straight back so it's away from any flailing chain as it goes out the hole. Then I'll just hook up the wires and we'll we'll have a winch. So as soon as that bolt is in, mm -hmm. that just holds it fairly well like that. Yep. And then the spring clip. That is our installation. Well, I mean, it's not as easy as just laying around eating chips, but it's pretty easy. That was very, very straightforward. So, so far, our relationship with this Muir winch is fantastic. <laughs> I already love it. So, if you're an Australian yachty um, and you want to buy Australian, you can get yourself a Muir winch. And it's not just that it's Australian, it's a pretty good product. Like that, that quick fit really was very, very quick and straightforward. 
Um, so I'm pretty impressed by it so far. I guess in future episodes, we'll see whether I'm impressed by how it handles rope because this is a, a rope and chain gypsy. So we've got 14 millimeter nylon rope here. Okay, um, and that eight millimeter stainless steel chain. It looks like it handles that rope really great so far. Um, but I mean, I haven't tried it out in the field, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say too much about it. So, yeah, this has really been great. I'm just gonna, um, I'm just gonna hook up these wires from the old winch. There is a deck switch here um, from the old one, and it, to be honest, it's pretty scabby looking, but I'm really tempted just to hang on to the Muir one that's really nice and shiny, put it away um, until the deck gets some attention. Um, because I don't want to go on, the, the new winch looks really great, um, but those buttons, you know, they wear and tear, they get UV damage and stuff like that. So I might actually just put that away somewhere safe where I know where it is. And when it comes time to just spruce up the deck, then we can put a new switch in. What do you think about that, Pascal? Yeah, I'm down with that. Yeah, because it's just a switch, isn't it? All it yeah. needs to do is just get underfoot and work. So um, I'd, I'll just go and have a look at the instructions, just get the orientation. There's um, a couple of terminals here that just say A1 and A2. I'm pretty sure positive would go to A1 um, and negative go to A2, and that would make it rotate uh, in a clockwise fashion when viewed from the top. But that's it. We've got a new anchor winch. So thank you, Arnold's Boat Shop, for our for our winch. We really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, it was, it's such a such a straightforward installation. I can't believe it. Almost another job ticked off the list. It won't take long for me to, to just quickly connect this. We'll see how much of that hundred meters of nylon rope we can fit into this locker, mm -hmm. and then I'll um, splice it to the chain. And then, then we can wash our hands of this job, it'll be done. So what's our anchoring setup for those people at home that want to know? Oh, okay. So we've got a 10 kilo Rockner anchor, and then that's backed up by eight millimeters of 316 stainless steel chain. And that was expensive. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into really anything about anchoring chain. Everyone's got their own ideas and I don't want to influence you about it, all right? We use stainless chain. Some people are just, oh, it's unacceptable. I've got my own ideas about it um, and you should make your own mind up about it as well. But anyway, we, we paid quite a lot for our stainless chain. We want, we've got good quality stainless chain. It's got about a four ton braking strain, which is the same as our nylon rope. Um, what else can we say about it? And it, it, just, it just stops us having to clean up rust. Hmm. All right. Some people are concerned about stainless. Um, they are concerned about the price. For you guys, stick with Gal. I don't want to. I don't want to talk anyone into a, a particular anchoring system, because, like I said, anchors and yachties. I mean, it was bad enough just that anchor splice. All right. Hmm. It, it really is like talking like religion to people. It's just something that shouldn't be broached with the yachties. I don't think. But we're using um, nylon road to back it up. So 30 meters of chain. Um, so we mostly do our anchoring in under 10 meters and then uh, nylon road. With all chain roads, I've used those and they work well. And what ha the way chain gets its shock absorption, okay, when you're anchoring, when a wave hits the boat, it'll go back um, and they can jar if you don't put enough chain out. But what's called a catenary curve you have a, the chain hangs down by gravity in a curve like that and as the as the ocean comes along and pushes the boat then that curve straightens out and then comes back as gravity hangs onto the chain and there's a balance so that curve acts like a shock, shock absorber i know from experience that in bigger seas and i know this from a rule as well um, in larger seas that catenary curve when it does actually come out everything comes to you know, quite a shock so chain by itself is not enough to give you a shock absorber. So a lot of people will put like a nylon rope snubber, um, a, a hook or some sort of claw that grabs the chain and then a length of nylon rope. And the reason being, um, rather than any other sort of rope, is nylon's very, very stretchy, but even like maintaining a very high braking strain, okay? It's very elastic. So it makes a very good shock absorber. For a boat of our um, size, I've, I've backed it up with 14 mil. Um, so in a, in, a, in a large weather event, we'd put all the chain out and even in 10 meters, I would probably let out another 40 meters of rope as well. 
and it's it, it, it's it's not that we've got enough and it's it's just a shallow angle pu pulling on the anchor but that would also happen it's just that that much nylon rope would be a massive shock absorber there'd be a lot of el elasticity in that taking the shocks out and i know that works well because i've anchored in behind a lot of reefs in the past and had to deal with at the high tide um you know meter meter and a bit seas coming in and you know neither Merle rides through them quite nicely but if you didn't have that shock absorber it'd get to the end of the chain and go bang so that's we've got that as our as shock absorber and with 100 meters we can anchor in really deep water if we want to but i'd probably try and avoid um anchoring any deeper than i can free dive which is about 17 meters what else do we want to talk about oh and the other thing is sometimes people get nylon rope and they're on the right track and they want to they want to make a snubber for themselves like a little shock absorber but they might have a quite a light boat and they go oh well i want it to be strong so i'll have 24 mil you know they'll go one inch nylon rope your boat might be too light to actually stretch such a heavy nylon um you know that'd be like eight nine ton breaking strain rope nearly 10 ton and it you just wouldn't get any elasticity you may as well be using climbing rope so for your snubber, you're better off hanging around that 12, 14 um, millimetre, unless you're over 40 foot, you know. But for us, here we go. Four ton braking strain is what we're what we're operating on. We don't we don't put much stress on our gear. But it, it's that's for a little skinny 30 footer like us. Even that is still probably overkill. We might be able to get away with six mil, but why would you go with what you can get away with? We go over over engineering just about everything we do. There we go. I'm pretty happy with it anyway. If you enjoyed this week's episode of Free Range Sailing, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up as it really helps get our video out to more viewers. To be notified each time we release a video, you'll need to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button on our channel page. If you're interested in finding out more about the music used or supporting Free Range Sailing through one of our crowdfunding platforms, you will find more information in the description of this video. See you next week.